Justin and Mark back with another amazing interview. We have the winner of season one of Lego Masters. Please welcome Tyler. Hello, sir. How are you doing? How's it going? Good, good. Fantastic. So um, I've heard that you guys actually know each other. Yes. How did you guys meet? The Lego community. Uh just through online, and then I think we met at a variety of conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, both of us just have a lot in common, even outside of Lego. Hobbies, faith, whatever, and so it just I kind of naturally drew us to each other. These guys are awesome. Uh, Mark and Steven both. They're cool guys. You said you knew him. Tyler was already kind of famous in the Lego competition I world. I would say so, yeah. When I was just starting out, it was about 2010 and 2011, Tyler was a well-known entity at that time, even back then. And so um, I think the first time we actually officially met in person was Brick Fair, Virginia in 2013, I believe. I'm not 100% not sure, but I think that's when we were able to say, hey, you're yeah. accurate enough. For <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so well, it, was, it was it was probably a little bit more special for us because like, oh, my gosh, it's Tyler Glides, you know, as little kids, you know. So um, that was really exciting. But, yeah, and then we've uh, bumped into each other in many conventions since then and just always kept in touch and uh, always a huge fan of Tyler's builds. It's a huge inspiration for people like me starting out and seeing the, the, the like, way ahead of its time builds that he was creating back then, so. And Tyler was like, who are these peons? Well, no, no, <laughs> Tyler was actually really nice. Like, even people, he like, just run up to him and be like, hey, I love your stuff, and he was always like, oh, thanks! So he's like the coolest guy, so. That's awesome. <laughs> he wasn't, he didn't have all that celebrity fame in his head at that time. I, so. Oh, oh, <laughs> He was an inspiration to you guys when you guys were first starting out. For sure. Did you guys com ever compete? In, just for the audience's sake, there are before long before Lego Masters. There's always been competitions at conventions at Lego conventions, and yeah. that's kind of where Tyler found a name for himself and you as well. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I definitely have gotten more and more into conventions this time because it goes on. Tyler is, I think, also very very well known for his stuff online, like he, uh, and commission building and stuff. As as far as I know, is that. Pretty accurate, Tyler. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you said even before Lego Masters. Yeah, yeah. Before okay. Lego Masters, Tyler was like a big deal. Like, <laughs> that's, in my mind, he was always one of the top. You know, so. we're not worried. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. One of the things that um, you know, Mark and Steven and I have both done is what's called Iron Builder, mm -hmm. um, and it's a just an online challenge between like two builders. They'll get matched up, and then they'll get some secret mystery piece that they have to both use in all of their builds, and uh, so. It's a really kind of prestigious building challenge. Mark and Steven have crushed it doing that, uh, I think, multiple times. So that's part of how we know each other is just through those competitions. We haven't ever competed against each other. Not in the online sense, for sure. I would be absolutely yeah. terrified to do that. One time, and I think it was 2018, we had like a live uh, build-off. We called it the Simon Games because our, our good friend Simon Liu was hosting that. We had a couple just little build challenges. There was a bunch of different uh, AFOLs from all over. And uh, I, I think our team ended up just beating you guys' team because Tyler liked this one really cute build from our team more. And so we, we just, and so I, I, I like to brag to, to people of like, I one time as a team challenge beat Tyler's team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm like, yes. <laughs> it's like, that's my little like, oh man. Yeah. So that, so I think that's the only time we've ever acted. And it wasn't even directly competing. It was like, yeah. it was a group of like, 12 people okay. each, you know, so it's like, it wasn't, it wasn't, it definitely wasn't head to head. We've had some fun contests in before. That's awesome. And you guys just became friends because you kept seeing each other. Oh, yeah. Like you said, you had a lot of things in common. Yeah. So that's awesome. So it's been a year now since Lego Masters. Put your head back before, back at that time. What was it like? The trauma. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like, the audition process? How did, did they approach you? Did you go and sign up yourself? Yeah, so I, I initially heard about it, just anybody and everybody who's related with Lego, you know, somebody's going, hey, check this out, you need to apply for this. Mm -hmm. Found out about it that way and then started getting messages from the different talent scouts that were out there just messaging anybody and everybody that did anything related to Lego. So it just kind of started a dialogue with one of those guys and kind of went from there. My wife and I were talking with the guy, like trying to figure out like, oh, I don't really have a, a partner that's you know willing to do it with me. I talked to a number of different people and uh, I think I even asked you guys. We you might've been in that conversation. I'm not sure, but all I know is we were busy that time at the time, right. so yeah. Uh, so I was like, ah, I can't really find a, a partner. And they're like, well, you know, does, does your wife build? And I was like, no, <laughs> does, 
she could be on the show too. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> was it not available to be on a Lego show? Um, okay. What was her reaction when you asked her? So I sat, I, we sat down at dinner and I was like, hey, you know, she knew I was talking to like the casting. Uh, I was like, hey, they, they want you to be on the show as my partner. And she was like, yeah, that's, that's fun. <laughs> and I was like, no, they're serious. She's like, really? <laughs> and she was kind enough to indulge my, <laughs> my uh, crazy aspirations to be on the show. Yeah. Uh, and of course, as we know, with hindsight, you guys absolutely crushed it. You guys were amazing. She was phenomenal. Like, here's a brand new builder who's hardly touched bricks ever. She comes in and she's like out building, you know, people who have been doing this for years. And this is like their hobby. And here comes this girl newbie <laughs> into the Lego scene and <laughs> crashes it on live television while being pregnant. And <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. While being pregnant. She's the real Lego master, right? There. <laughs> That's she's awesome. like along for the ride. I'm just going to do this little thing over here. And she's like... Did she have morning sickness or anything? Was she dealing with any of that stuff during the filming? Wow. Oh, yeah. She was she was feeling very sick most of the time, very fatigued and worn out most of the time. So. Did she have to stop and sit down some that we didn't see on the edited episodes? Some. Not not a whole lot. Okay. She's a trooper. She would put her game face on, but then when we got back to uh, the, the casting trailer or something, she'd be like... <laughs> How is the little addition to your family? Oh, he's doing awesome. He's crawling around all over the place. He, he loves Lego. Like, if I leave one of these doors open just a crack, and it's not, like, locked or latched... He beelines it and comes in here and he starts his like heavy breathing of like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what to do first because he can open all these little drawers and he'll be like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, he's an absolute joy. I love him. So you were not in like the audition process very long. They found you a partner and then you were able to get on the show pretty quickly it sounds like right it wasn't too much trouble or was it a lot of interviews yeah it's kind of a strange process there'd be times where <clears throat> you are kind of having like back-to-back -back, like interviews or like phone calls and they're wanting you to fill out paperwork or this kind of thing and then you wouldn't hear from them for like a month and then there'd be like this new wave of like bam 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 bam, bam. we need to have another interview or this or that um we need this to happen and then maybe not here for a few more weeks. And mm -hmm. So that was just kind of the general process. I think that's how things in Hollywood. And Hurry up and wait. I've always heard that reality TV is not real. That um, maybe not so much with the competition style shows where there's actual money on the line. So my question to you is how real was it or how fake was it? There's certainly things that are edited. And I guess that's the biggest way that uh, things are, I guess, manipulated or aren't real is in the editing. So a good example of this is when you kind of like something happens and then you see like reactions from people, they're like, oh, oh, oh. you know, some of those reactions are fake. They, they, there'd be times where they're like, hey, can we get, just get some like reaction shots of you like looking over this direction, look this direction, like just look up, you know, things like that. They just want to be able to, you know, have little bits that they can splice in to just drop, dramatize it a little bit. Um, I guess a, a good example of that would be like in the first episode, Mark and Boone had their uh, roller coaster lift, which is amazing, but uh, the lift didn't work uh, when they needed it to for the judging. And then, you know, we went after them and we had a lift ride that did work and they, they cut to a shot of Boone, like going like, mm, you know, great, there's worked and ours didn't. Um, and, and that's not a, an accurate reaction in the moment because, you know, just in the events that day, we presented our build first and then they presented our theirs after ours. So that was just a reaction to who knows what that uh, they chose to use, which is kind of interesting. But as far as the, the rest of it goes, there's no script. There's nothing where they're like, oh, we need you. We, you guys are going to have the build that fails this time. So you're going to have to make sure that your ride doesn't go up. Like there's none of that kind of stuff. In that sense, it's all very real. But there are times when, you know, you have producers coming around and they're, they're prompting you with questions. So, you know, the dialogue and things you're talking about aren't necessarily completely organic. 
Uh, there are producers that are going, hey, talk, talk about the baby. What are you thinking about? What are you going to do with the money? <laughs> In the moment, we're like, we're not thinking about the baby or the money at all. We're trying yeah. not to, actually. <laughs> we're trying to think about, you know, what we're building. But uh, at least for, for storytelling purposes, they need that, that kind of information that, that helps engage with viewers. One thing I think a lot of people might be surprised to hear is that there's hair and makeup and costumes. Like, none of those clothes you own on the show right and they even some of them yes okay underwear and socks <laughs> i hope yeah underwear and socks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some of it was yours and the, the makeup was all mine though <laughs> i mean they did dress people up in certain ways to differentiate them it's kind of like wrestlers you know they have to make characters so that you can differentiate them exactly and th there's i think that's really cool it's really fun to see the the characters that they choose to present and that's not fake they're they're relying on who you are you know amy and i are, we're newlyweds we're we're in love you know so they kind of went with this uh date night sort of feel um it looks a little more like we're going to church which basically that's what we wear to church so yeah. hey we're, we're okay with that you know we're, we'll be the church going uh crew and it's just really fun to see kind of how they present uh, the teams in terms of the wardrobe and that kind of stuff. Do Mark and Boone really wear that much flannel? I think so. Anytime I see like plaid and flannel stuff like in the store, I'm like, oh, hey, look, Mark and Boone costumes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much did you guys actually interact with Will Arnett? Not a whole lot. So we didn't really interact with Will or the judges outside of, you know, what you see on camera. They kept them relatively separate. And I, I mean, they have to in yeah. a way that there's no... Influence. Influence, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I would imagine that's the same for pretty much any Com competition. Mm -hmm. competition style. Yeah. TV show. So it's been a year now. Uh, how has your life changed or has it? Has, has being on the show really... Uh, changed what you do? So there's uh, certainly some ways they've changed and some ways that, that our lives haven't changed. Uh, you know, as a result of winning, we've been able to purchase a house, which is just amazing. We're loving uh, the new house and house projects. Like I love making things. So we're, we're building things, home improvement stuff, which I'm, I'm, I'm loving. You know, my, my job hasn't changed. Uh, still get to sit at home and play with Lego all day. It's interesting being like recognized in public. Like that's probably the biggest thing that's really changed is, you know, being able to like walk through the neighborhood. We were walking through the park uh, that's right around the corner and like this little girl like comes running up, excuse me, excuse me, are y'all, are y'all the Lego masters? <laughs> like, oh yeah. <laughs> so that kind of stuff is just funny. So you were signing autographs or signing bricks? <laughs> yeah t-shirts you know yeah you're just bricks in your pocket all the time yeah, that's right. <laughs> make it rain was there any point in the competition where you felt like things really amped up to the next level even if it's in the sake of fatigue or the amount of time you were given or the difficulty of the challenges was there a point where you're like okay now this is serious Amy and I kind of had our, our game faces on the whole time. Like from mm -hmm. the very first challenge, we were like, oh, this is, this is serious. But you're not necessarily being compared with the other competitors. You're kind of being compared with the challenge itself and what the judges have in mind for that challenge. So it's hard to say that there was like some specific moment where it was like, oh, this is like the next level. Did you know any of the builders before? The yeah, so team? I I knew uh, I knew Boone and I knew Aaron and I knew of Sam. Those were the the folks that I had and I, I know I had seen like the that really awesome thing that Richard and Flynn had built, but I didn't know like who they were. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I had seen, I realized that, oh, y'all are the ones that build that like mechanical, like dragon castle thing that then I made like that connection. But uh, no, I knew Aaron uh, relatively well, knew of Boone and Sam. So when you found out they were on the show as well, was it like, okay, it's serious now? Or were you like, nah, I got this. <laughs> I, I definitely knew that like Boone and Aaron uh, were at least I knew ahead of time their building ability. So I kind of immediately looked at them as some of our biggest competition. I don't want to say that we necessarily were trying to outbuild them each time, but we, we kind of had a, a, an imaginary bar of like, okay, we understand we have to be building like at 
a certain level. Yeah, we can't like slack off and just like, ah, we got this, you know, no, we're going to have to like do our absolute best every time because you know, these people know what they're doing. Yeah, I'm sure there's a calculated risk with everything and you're thinking, oh, these people are probably going to be in the top five. This is my competition. Or did that really not occur to you? Yeah, one of the things that you know, we liked doing is kind of just analyzing the other teams, you know, everybody's got their own strengths and weaknesses. For example, like Mark and Boone, like they're great at just building big stuff really fast. Like it's insane. Like we'll be like still planning and they've got like half this tower built and we're just like, what just happened? You know, <laughs> like, how did they do that? And then Aaron is just like a master of technical ability. So he can like some of the mechanics and things like he can create these mechanical functions in like the blink of an eye or just like his piece usage and it just looks flawless. And you're like, man, how does he do that? So like different people have these different strengths, uh, like uh, even Sam and Jessica, like they were really good at these just like conceptual things. Like, so if it was something where you had to just come up with something kind of uh, zany and just pull something out of thin air, like they're going to be like all over that. So you, we could look at different challenges and go like, oh, they're going to be good at this one. Um, they're probably going to do something like this, or they're going to probably do something like this. So just taking that sort of stuff into account in our planning of like, oh, what are, what are we going to do kind of in relation to what other people are doing to to some extent. Was there a sense or uh, pressure, even if it's self-inflicted, of I've got to do something different? There's certainly a desire to not make what you're doing too similar to somebody else, because then mm -hmm. that's going to take away from both people's creation. So mm -hmm. that was, you know, like with the, the baby challenge, it's not necessarily that they were copying us, because I don't think they were, but, you know, they didn't pay attention enough to know, oh, we're both building a baby. That's probably not the best choice. Somebody's already got a baby built. No, I don't, I don't think they realize that we were necessarily doing that. Everybody's so focused on, on what they're doing um, that it's hard to kind of look around and pay attention. But yeah, when there's multiples of the same thing, it can be, uh, it can detract from both because automatically those are going to get compared against each other Absolutely, in the judge's yeah. mind. The, the other example would be in the, the storybook challenge. Sam and Jessica and us were kind of both landed on this idea of like a pack rat type thing. And we were like, oh, well, let, let's go like talk to them and figure out if we can kind of figure out a way that we're not doing the same thing or at least make sure that we're going to be doing something different enough that we're not going to necessarily be directly compared against each other. So that was totally allowed that you could go and talk to other teams sure. and ask what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Was there anything super surprising, even from a production standpoint that you didn't realize, oh, TV didn't work this way, or I didn't realize I'd have to do this. Was there anything that you remember like, huh, I, that didn't work the way I thought at all? When you were on the show, I was just surprised at how well everything is planned and orchestrated. Just I, I went to film school, so like I, I understand a little bit of what the behind the scenes of filming mm -hmm. and this kind of stuff go is like. But man, it was like a well oiled machine. Like there's certainly a ton of time where you're just sitting around waiting, but like they're doing stuff and they've got like this list and they're like, all right, this is happening now. This is moving here. This stuff, blah, 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 blah. All right, done. Next. This, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, wow, how, this is crazy. Like all this stuff is like happening all at once. And you know, people running around, like, I don't know how they keep all that straight. I've watched a few videos with Boone and he talked about how you guys hung out a lot at the hotel there was one day where they went to Disneyland what was the non-filming time like for you guys I know your wife was pregnant so she was probably resting a lot of the time but did you guys hang out did the production provide any entertainment for you guys what did you guys do on your off time we pretty much had you know the weekends to ourselves to do what we wanted like you said Amy was pregnant so most of our off time was spent just like being kind of away from everybody else just relaxing um we, we got to go to some, do some cool stuff. Like uh, we went to like the Griffith Observatory and we just did some hiking and went to some like little waterfalls and things like that. Just something kind of relaxing, like we're cooped up inside this building uh, for all hours of the day. It seems like time is almost like gone that we were like, we just want to like go get outside and do something a little more relaxing during like the normal filming days. Like we were 
we are all in the same building with one another. Like I don't, I imagine with COVID that's got to be completely different. But at the time we were, uh, we were all hanging out together. We were all just talking about Lego and different things like that. Or we'd just be all like laying around taking naps. <laughs> were you were filming late in the night? I, I guess that's the other surprising thing about the the film industry is how little sleep everybody gets. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I knew it was like a very intense thing, but it's not like a nine to five. It's like a six to like midnight sort of schedule. Uh, so we were getting up pretty early. We were, uh, getting to bed pretty late and there was people that were up long before we were and went to bed long after we did. So like, it's, it was pretty intense. And then you're under all that stress and that time pressure during the challenges. She invited energy drinks for us. Oh, good. (laughs) That's good. Energy drinks. Excellent. Aaron and Christian mentioned how there were certain days of filming where there was no building. You were just called to the set just to do the interviews. I imagine those were typically less stressful. Were those still very long days though? There was only a few days where it was like just interviews only. Yeah, there was days when there wasn't necessarily building. You know, it's, it's, each episode is filmed over a series of days mm-hmm. and some days you're just filming, you know, the, the walk-in stuff and getting the challenge or kind of hanging around doing, moving your builds around while they're getting shots and video or doing interviews and just kind of floating around between uh, kind of a bunch of different things. Did you guys ever get to sleep in? Or was it always like nine to midnight? Every day was pretty much the same. Ah, some really long, long days, especially for somebody who's pregnant. Like it was rough on me, but I can't imagine like, oof. So it's a mental and physical endurance challenge as well. Oh, absolutely. One of the other challenging things is that there was, there's like that high intensity time of being kind of like on camera, on set, building stress. And then it'd be like, okay, now we need you guys to go back to the trailer and wait. And it's just like uh, this monotonous boredom. So like that uh, contrast of like high stress, then like zero stress, like uh, maintaining like a a level of energy. Cause you know, like as soon as you start to get comfortable, they're going to be like, all right, everybody back on set, you know, we're rolling in five, Uh, you know, like that sort of thing. You're like, oh, I don't do well with those like polar (laughs) opposites. It felt like I was- No warm up or cool down period. It's just on or off. What was your uh, method for coping with that? I'm not a big energy drink person. So I, I, I didn't do a bunch of coffee or energy drinks. So I was probably, maybe that's why in some of these videos, I, I just look like a <laughs> zombie. Just try and kind of, it was, a, you're trying to like get some level of relaxation and like rest, but not too much. So you're trying to like balance, okay, I can rest for like five minutes and maybe like get a little energy boost so that when I'm like back on, I can, I can, I can have yeah. a little more juice uh, in the tank, but not like too much. Tell us what you want to see out of Lego Masters season two. Was there specific challenges or types of challenges that you want to see done more of or, or what? One of the best things about the first season was th- those destruction challenges, uh, watching things explode. I mean, that's why we love action movies. We like seeing things get blown up. I love that aspect of it. I'd love to see more of that. One of the things I loved about just how they kind of orchestrated all the challenges is that they really thought outside the box and stretched people who even have a lot of experience building a variety of different things. They were able to create these challenges that you're like, whoa, I never even thought of building a space themed thing that's got to crash, but tell a story while it's doing it. Like that kind of stuff. You're like, oh, cool. Or, or like the the um, the movie mashup challenge of like oh, start building this. Now you get another theme and you have to like mash them up. And you're like, I've never thought of this. This yeah. is stretching my creativity. So anything that like forces people to like really stretch their creativity and think outside the box. I love that kind of stuff or st- stuff that you wouldn't ever think to actually build in Lego. Like I think, mm-hmm. I think I saw in the, the trailer, there's like some, like people are wearing like Lego hats and things like oh, wearable Lego. Like that's awesome. I, I love that kind of stuff. It's just very outside the box. So the more outside the box, the better. Now, what would be your advice to someone who wants to get on season three? What do they need to do, prepare, set up? if they want to audition and potentially get on season three? I guess there's two main aspects of it. There's the team dynamic. There's how you relate to your teammate. Just two random Lego fans 
that's not as exciting. Uh, there's certainly going to be people like that on the show, but that's not as exciting as like, oh, a husband and wife, uh, two brothers, a brother and a sister, you know, those really close, a little more intimate relationships are, are important. So that's something to consider if you're considering applying. And then there's just like technical ability, just being able to technically build things of you know, relatively large size and be able to manage your time well, that kind of thing. Just the logistics of building something large under a time constraint. Is having a online presence, having pictures you can show them and prove that you made those builds, is that very important to getting a foot in the door? Yeah, it's certainly important. Uh, I don't think it's of prime importance. Okay. Uh, for, for example, like uh, my wife has no building <laughs> experience in the building and they're like, send us pictures of things you've made she's like Ta -da! This is it. there's nothing but that didn't they weren't like oh she's never built anything get out of here so mm -hmm. sure they want to see at least one person with some level of building experience how does one practice or prepare for a competition of this scale um i i i'll go through my training process for amy she doesn't know anything about lego she's like completely new to this um she's got a good like artistic eye like she can know oh that looks right that doesn't look right but uh the training process i guess for her was more just okay here let's learn kind of the the types of pieces that there are you know, these are bricks these are plates you know so that when i tell her oh we're gonna do plates She's not going, wait, what's a plate again? What, what's a stud? You know, like <laughs> you had flashcards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, what's this? Um, it also helped that she had helped me like sort and kind of understood the, the repertoire of pieces that are available. Um, and the main thing we did though, is more of, I guess, mental planning in the sense that we'd, you know, come up with kind of these random ideas, uh, you know, like she would come up with like a word, I'd come up with another word, and then we kind of mash them up, you know, so, oh, uh, vacation, penguin, what does a penguin vacation look like? And then we'd maybe like sketch out our idea. And then we'd talk about, oh, how would we break this up into buildable chunks like oh I would probably say Amy you'll, you'll work on this floating ice piece that we're gonna do you'll build like this landscape and then I'm gonna build a little character maybe we're gonna have some penguins on like little lounge chairs on this like iceberg that's like floating along maybe that's what a penguin vacation looks like you know so just being able to kind of think through how to take an idea and start implementing it and what pieces you kind of might use or techniques, things like that. That's really good advice. So you guys didn't actually build the stuff because I guess that would take too long, but right. you thought we through build, it and planned through it. We did build plan some things it. together. Okay. The, the mental planning and the thought processes was more important to us. And that would be, I think, where partners that know each other have a huge advantage over people who are just paired together like Aaron and Christian. Right. Do you feel that being a part of the conventions and the competitions is important for someone to really stretch themselves and become a belt, better builder and or even be on the path to be on a future Lego Masters season? Yeah, so being a part of kind of the community or different challenges, you know, those are going to give you some criticism or feedback. Like if you're just building within your your bubble of your Lego room at home, you you may not be getting critical feedback, or if you you know participate in a, a competition or a challenge, oh you might you might lose, but you'll learn something in the process of that. Like oh, I should have done this, you know. So those kind of getting some degree of criticism from you know friends, the Lego community, whatever, is probably going to be beneficial because you're going to get some criticism on the show and it just helps you kind of hone your own uh, abilities to think, oh, is, is this idea a good idea to pursue, you know? Yeah, so being a part of kind of the community or different challenges, you know, those are going to give you some criticism or feedback like if you're just building within your your bubble of your Lego room at home, you you may not be getting critical feedback, or if you you know participate in a, a competition or a challenge, oh you might you might lose, but you'll learn something in the process of that. Like oh, I should have done this, you know. So those kind of getting some degree of criticism from you know friends, the Lego community, whatever, is probably going to be beneficial because you're going to get some criticism on the show and it just helps you kind of hone your own uh, abilities to, 
think, oh, is, is this idea a good idea to pursue, you know? And you mentioned a very good point about um, taking criticism and like, you don't know how good you are until you're compared to people in a sense. Um, facing a really difficult challenge. Yeah. Um, and that could be the thing you're facing is the challenge itself. Mm -hmm. Like they say that in ping pong, like, oh, you think you're good? No, it, you're only as good as the people you play with. Mm -hmm. um, because there's, you know, there's people that can just do that and destroy you. But uh, I, I think a lot of competitions kind of work the same way, especially uh, with Lego. If you're just building in a garage by yourself and all you're doing is looking at pictures online, you may not get a real sense of what, mm -hmm. like, competition is, especially if you want to be on the show. It is a competition. Thank you so much for taking the time out and talking with us today. Maybe we'll have you talk, speak again, maybe? I'd be happy to. I'd always be happy to. This is that great. Would be, that would be amazing. This is the point where we say, plug yourself. Anything you want to say or what's going on there? in your life? What's Adam? going on in your life? I guess the only thing is there's a, a Stitch is on Lego Ideas. This is like, I guess, the second time around. So if you want to go vote for it, he's not gathering a whole lot of votes, but. Well, we'll definitely have a link down in the description for that. So the Stitch on Lego Ideas is yours. Yep. And uh, you can find me on Instagram and Flickr, Facebook. If someone wants a commission build from you, where do they look? They could go to my website, tylerclates.com. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time out to talk to us. And we will hopefully talk to you very soon. I look forward to it. Well, that was awesome. That was really fun to talk to Tyler. <laughs> so we will see you guys very, very soon. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. We may even get you more interviews, hopefully in the future, if not with other LEGO Masters, maybe with uh, Tyler and Aaron and Christian again, if they're willing we'll to. We'll see, you know, what their schedule looks like. You know them personally, right? Yeah, so like I'll, we were I'll, I'll be about. mugging them and be like, hey guys, come back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we will see you guys very, very soon.